2023 Porsche Taycan First Drive, Subtle Improvements Sometime between our fourth Americano of the morning and second run up the beautiful mountain switchbacks of northern Italy in a 2023 Porsche Taycan, Porsche built the 100,000th copy of its first ever EV, a Neptune Blue Taycan Turbo S sedan, not unlike the one we were piloting. The Taycan lineup has steadily grown since it was first introduced in 2020. It now consists of three body styles, two motor configurations, two batteries, and ten variants in all. Changes to the Taycan for the 2023 model year, while less dramatic than before, were intended to make it a more enticing car for prospective EV buyers, and an easier car to live with for its owners. Why it's important Given that the Porsche make an electric SUV, set to be built on Porsche's new PPE platform, is still the better part of a year away, and with Porsche's goal of having 50% of its sales be all-electric or plug-in hybrid vehicles by 2025 rapidly approaching, the automaker can't afford to rest on its laurels with the Taycan. To that end, Porsche has made a host of changes to the 2023 Taycan, Taycan Sport Turismo, and Taycan Cross Turismo in order to make it more efficient, charge quicker, and offer more connected features. The biggest change for 2023 was made to dual-motor-equipped Taycans, which now disconnect the front motor in normal and range drive modes. As you might expect, this drastically increases the car's EPA-rated range. You can get the full breakdown here, but range increases by as much as 14.5% on average, with the champ somewhat surprisingly being the Taycan GTS with 246 miles of range. Porsche also worked to make sure the updated Taycan charges quicker. A revised thermal management system broadens the car's charge curve when using a level 3 DC fast charger, while a new onboard 22 kW AC charger ensures that level 2 charges at home are shorter than before. Porsche also tweaked the 2023 Taycan's infotainment system, parking sensors, and increased the number of modules that could be updated over the air, adding functions like keyless entry in the process. A neat electrochromatic panoramic roof was also added to the options mix, and Europe gets a new Nürburgring tuned Taycan Turbo S performance package with a stiffer chassis tune and stickier rubber. We hear there's a 50-50 shot this package makes its way to our shores. Pros, what we like. We spent some time in both the 2023 Taycan Turbo S and GTS sedans and can happily confirm that the Taycan still largely drives as it did before. The 222-mile Taycan Turbo S, which sports dual motors good for 750 horsepower in 774 lbft of torque with a single-speed automatic up front and a two-speed auto and back, is the obvious choice if you prefer the view out your window to be blurry. It remains violently quick, yet it's comfortable and docile when driven sedately. The new drive mode logic is only noticeable if you're aggressive with the accelerator when coming out of a corner. Get a little greedy, and the rear end will step out on you a few degrees before stability control intervenes. The Taycan GTS offers a similar driving experience at $135,550, roughly $50,000 shy of the $188,850 base price of the Turbo S. With just 590 horsepower and 626 lbft on tap, it's designed to be a more approachable EV performance car. At about 3.2 seconds to 60 miles per hour versus 2.4 seconds for the Turbo S, the GTS is certainly the slower car, but it doesn't feel it on the road. It rips down straights confidently and accelerates hard out of corners. Both cars are incredibly well composed, with quick, direct steering, a playful chassis, and composed rides. They are, in a word, Porsches. We didn't have the opportunity to test Porsche's new charging claims but found the revised infotainment system a little snappier than we remembered it being pre-update. We also really like the new chromatic roof, especially since it allows owners to individually darken or lighten nine sections of glass with the flick of a finger. Cons, what we don't like. Our biggest complaint with the Taycan remains its brake pedal feel and the lack of a one-pedal driving mode. Porsche engineers believe one-pedal driving, which would immediately begin slowing the car as soon as you withdraw your foot from the accelerator, is a waste of energy. As such, there are effectively two regenerative braking settings in the 2023 Taycan, none, and an amount so small, it may as well be none. This forces you to use the brake pedal more, 
which itself has a somewhat unnatural feel to it. We understand Porsche's philosophy, but we think Taycan owners would appreciate the ability to make the decision about regenerative braking levels for themselves. We know we would. The other drawback with the Taycan is its limited over-the-air update abilities. Unlike other automakers, Porsche isn't able to implement over-the-air updates to the Taycan's power, driving range, or any physical feature in the car. Instead, owners must take their car to the dealership to receive drivetrain updates. The bottom line. Although the 2023 Taycan is largely the same car in many respects, that's far from a bad thing given it remains one of the world's best performance EVs. And thanks to the updates Porsche has made to it, the Taycan is an even better all-around car than before. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.